Hi everyone, Pastor Nass from St. Paul Lutheran Church in Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Here with devotions this week from our devotion calendar, getting ready for Reformation worship this coming weekend. So themes about God's grace, faith, scriptures. Today the key word is freedom. So let's begin today in the name of God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Being free is a wonderful blessing, and I know we enjoy that politically here in the United States, but more importantly today, the, the topic is, is spiritual freedom. And I, I haven't been a, a slave in my lifetime, but I know that people who have been slaves and then been, been freed, they say, I never want to go back to that. That, that freedom is better than, than slavery, and that's what Paul says in the verse that's before us today. It's from Galatians chapter 5. Uh, so here's what Paul wrote, Galatians 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. As I mentioned just before, political freedom is a wonderful blessing and we enjoy that, we, we hold on to that, but that's not really the focus of this verse. This is talking about the freedom that Christ gives us. It's for, for freedom that Christ has set you, you free. So if you'd read the book of Galatians, you'd see what Paul means by spiritual slavery. Really, there, there are two things he focuses on that, on that book. One would be if there are people who would tell you that you have to fill, fulfill a set of requirements in order for God to love you, then you would be a slave to those set of rules or laws, thinking that you have to do those things in order to have eternal life in heaven. The specific issue in the book of Galatians is in the early Christian church, there were some people coming out of Old Testament Judaism who told the Gentile Christians, you have to be circumcised in order to be part of God's family. Now, circumcision had been a wonderful blessing God had given to his Old Testament people, but the New Testament makes it clear that now in Christ Jesus, that is not what marks us as God's people. Uh, instead, we're baptized into God's family, that circumcision is not something that has to happen in order for you to, to have a place in the family of God. But there are people telling the, the people in Galatia, unless you're circumcised, you cannot be part of God's family. And, and Paul pushed back really strongly against that because that was setting a condition on salvation. It wasn't by by, by grace alone, through faith alone, if there had to be that, that element for, for people to be saved. So that's, that's one side of slavery. The other side that, that Paul focuses on too is that we're set free from serving Satan and ser serving sin. We're set free to serve God. That there are those two masters. Jesus talks that way too. You can serve God or you can serve, serve sin. And without Jesus, we keep serving sin as our, as our default. Sin is our master, but Jesus has set us free. So Paul would say, don't go back today and then go back into, into sin. And so the thought I want to leave with you as a pastor today is part of our Reformation heritage as Lutherans is holding on to the freedom that we have in Christ. Before the time of Martin Luther, there were many, and even himself growing up, he he thought there were things that he had to do in order to have eternal life. And there was a slavery then in feeling like salvation was not only God's gift, it was also something that had to be earned. And so today, first of all, to rejoice in this, salvation is God's gift to you entirely because of his grace. You do not have to fulfill any requirement in order for God to love, love you. He loves you first. The second thing is, as Lutherans too, that, that doesn't mean that we just say, I'm going to go out and sin. Some people get, get that, that twisted notion that because I'm forgiven, that because salvation is God's grace, it doesn't matter how I live. Instead, later in Galatians, Paul's going to contrast what that kind of life looks like. And he says, no, instead, the fruit of the Spirit who lives in us, that is love and joy and peace and faithfulness, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control, those kinds of the fruits of the Spirit. That's what freedom looks like in Christ. To use your life to serve him, not to serve yourself, or certainly not to go out and sin, but to hold on to that freedom that we have in Christ. So once again, as I close, here is Galatians 5 verse 1. Paul says this, It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. So let's say a prayer. 
Lord, I thank you today for the freedom that you have given us. You give us forgiveness and eternal life freely out of your grace, not because of what we do. We are not bound to any conditions to make you love us. Uh, you also set us free from sin and give us the wonderful privilege of living for you as your dear children. And so I pray today that you would keep us from ever going back to slavery, either thinking that we have to earn your favor or going and living as if it doesn't matter uh, whether we sin or not. So please go with each of us today. Help us to live in that freedom. Amen. Go now today with the Lord's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen.